How you doing? This is Yaakov with a beautiful idea. Sorry, I haven't been around. I haven't been feeling well in the matter of this beautiful idea. May there be for Shalema for Yaakov Eliezer ben Simalea and Leah Sarah Bat Eliza, not the Simcha ben Leah Sarah, and also everybody in the whole world that needs healing, uh, and spiritually or physically, and um, everybody uh, enjoy and uh, be able to uh, grow from what I'm about to share. So I was doing my some some to do it and uh, personal prayer recently, and uh, um, I was gonna talk about something else. But uh, I decided that maybe this is more important because I know uh, I know some pe- everybody's looking for God, and um, sometimes people don't know that there is information that's already been shared before um, about specific topics that uh, you know that they're talking about. So obviously, um, Judaism and um, does not. And the mono, monotheistic faith does not believe that a human being can be or is God. Um, he could be an agent, or a messenger of God, but he cannot be God. God ultimately is um, beyond any human. And no matter how righteous, the most righteous human being can be, such as Adam or Moshe, Moshe or David or Mashiach even himself when he comes, um, and we can manifest godliness within us godliness is not god <laughs> two different things godliness is is still god being covered covered over because one moment before godliness was not revealed the next moment godliness was revealed so so the the person uh, per, a person is able to reveal godliness uh, and aspects of god but god himself is something else is above all material Spirit, even spiritual. Spiritual is also creation, believe it or not. Um, God is above all spiritual and physical creations. It's hard for people to understand that, uh, to understand, but but uh, in in Judaism we say, en od milvado, that really there's nothing but God. So really, when, when a person is trying to understand really what's going on in this world, it's, it's not... Uh, it's not so simple all the time because there's a lot of conflicting ideals, but ultimately, God is simple on one point uh, that He's everything. So to point at one thing and say this is God and this isn't God is uh, is is difficult to say that this chair is God and this other chair is not God is is difficult. This chair has godliness in it. This chair, God formed it. God is within it, but we don't call it God. It's not the thing that's going to command me. It's not the thing. It's not going to, you know, um, even. Okay, cool. There's an alarm. That's wonderful. I'm not afraid. Um, but the most important thing that we have to understand, <laughs> the most important thing is that we have to understand is that uh, even that alarm is not God, but um, Moshe, you can be a messenger of God, and and what comes out of your mouth is godly wisdom, godly advice, godliness, but it's not God. God can give you God can give you advice through that person. It can be a vessel through them, and God can come and speak through them. That's godliness. God Himself is something else, it's something else. Meaning, meaning to anything physical in this world is not God. God can speak through a rock. He can speak through a burning bush. He can those that's God godliness being revealed through the bush. Okay? But to call the bush God, you you lost God. Right? You got lost God is everywhere. Okay? So so this is the main point we want to get to because there are many people in, in in the generations, millions and millions of people that made uh, over history have made God into a human, um, and in, especially in the Torah and in the, the prophets, God. Uh, there were many uh, anthropomorphic, which is human-like um, uh, metaphors and 
uh, similes, that, uh, things that have been, uh, phrases that have been used uh, by th these prophets that have had godly experiences in order to, for us to understand who God is. It's not for us to think God is, is human. It's for us to understand God. Just like the, the, the Torah is story. The Torah, the, the truth, has many layers. It has pshat, which is the simple meaning, drush, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the deeper meaning, remez, hints, and sod, which, is the, which are the secrets. Okay, there are many different levels. And unless you know all four aspects of the Torah, especially, particularly in their Hebrew, um, as they are, um, it's very difficult to understand all of it, to be, to, to be able to understand all the different aspects. You can understand, you can be, have revelations of, uh, you can have a, a godly experience, you can have wonderful things, but every single level is very precious, and each one has its own revelation of godliness. And we see why a story is so important, because from when you're a young child, when you're a young individual, how, how the world how you perceive the world and everything around you. This is one of the ideas that God gave me when I, uh, many years ago. How you perceive the world around you is based on sequence of events. For instance, you wake up in the morning, you open up your eyes, you put your feet on the ground, um, you, go to the, you go to the bathroom, then you brush your teeth, you wash your hands, the whole situation, everything, every, all the things that you do when you get up in the morning is a sequence. And then you start learning the sequence is longer uh, and make has more meaning. You get up in the morning, you end up going to school, all, and then you go to, uh, you know, wherever, uh, you have all these thoughts. Um, then you see all these events happening and folding before your eyes, and you start to be able to remember them. Uh, you know, by the time you're five, six, seven years old, you know, things have a lot more meaning. And then you go a little bit, get a little older, things have even more meaning. Um, that you that you feel in the world. So really, the story aspect of the Torah is appealing to your simple, to everybody's simple mind, simple understanding. Because on the simple level, it's a story, but it's not merely a story. And those who have taken the Torah and just merely have put into it and have merely limited to a story, they're really missing so many things. Because that's actually like the how do I say? It's like the really the 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 outside 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 part of the whole torah it's just for us a way to relate to the actual torah torah is way deeper than that it's it's it makes kind of makes it look like a joke to be honest with you the more deeper you go uh to be honest with you the the, the torah is very very deep very deep and also makes all scholar uh things also look like uh like uh primitive that's the word i'm looking for it makes everything look very primitive because psycho psychology is has has not caught has not caught up at all to uh, to the Torah, and it's going to take a long time, a long time. Uh, they've done a lot. There's been a lot of research, a lot of beautiful things, but it's based on your approach and your questions that you're asking. So the questions that they're asking are good, and that's the research you're going to come up with. But it's nothing compared. To the to the questions and the solutions that are and the and the debates and the and not only that the secret and the and the revelations that are in the they're in the, in the, they're in the Torah and then deeper aspects of the Torah as well and the layers of the Torah so the story is just the beginning it's just for a way for you to relate everything's just a way for humans to relate it's not about us it's about God God's like I want you to understand me okay understand so he helps he helps us he comes down to us not we should not think that God forbid that he's human or that he's that he because he came down so much he wanted to reveal himself so much therefore that uh, we should make him into God that he wanted to 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 give the Torah to Moshe and then through Moshe uh, uh, you know bring it down for all his people and then for the whole world and uh, uh, we shouldn't think that God forbid oh wow now God is Moshe no 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 we should th think that God is so merciful that he wants to give it to human beings <laughs> That we can make so many mistakes, and yet he's still he's still willing to give it to us. So there's a there's a, actually a Talmud that I'll speak about now. One of my one of my favorite rabbis I used to listen to a lot, a lot, a lot um, when I was closer to him, especially meaning like physically, geologically in New York, and also I had a lot more I had a lot a lot more of a CD. His name is Rav Yaakov Yagin, and he he brought down the Gemara uh, about this Tal the Talmud, and the Talmud it speaks about. 
Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who is the author of the Zohar HaKadosh, along with his students and his son, Rabbi Lazar. And he made a very, very, very bold statement that if people knew this, they would be like, oh, wow, I didn't know that somebody else said this. Yeah, this is actually recorded, guaranteed, and every Jew reads this who learns the, the Talmud. Okay, so you should know this. It's, 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 it's something that people have not heard before, and it's important for people to hear. Rabbi Shem Yochai said that if I, I myself, alone, okay, I myself have the power, not if, I myself have the power, if I wanted, to nullify all the sins from the beginning of time until his current generation, until the time that he was living, he has that ability to nullify all the sins. Okay? He then said, I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to have to forgive me? Ah, Rav Shimon said, I have the power to nullify all the sins, I think, of, of his, from when he was born till, he, till, his, till, till that day, like in his generation. I believe that what he's saying, his generation. He then said, him with his son, Rav Lazar, has the ability from the beginning of time until his generation to be able to nullify all the sins. And then he brought in another very, very righteous person, uh, one of the righteous people of the Gemara, and he said, of the, of the Talmud, and he said, if us three are together, we have the power to nullify all the sins from the beginning of time until the end of time. There you go. Uh, and uh, We're not talking about we're talking about from the beginning of time, long before he ever lived, all the way till the end, to the end of time in, in existence itself. Okay? So there you go. You have it already. A human being already has said it. Guaranteed. It's recorded 100%. If you ask a rabbi, uh, if you ask somebody who's read this, or, or somebody who can show you where it's, where it's written 100%, it's written 100%. Okay? That already, it's already said. But he's so humble enough that he to, to recognize and to, to show everybody that um, it took three people uh, to be able to do this, not just himself. And and he has the ability so to be able to do from the beginning of the, with with his son and this other big tzaddik, other big, big righteous person, from the beginning of time until the end of time. So Rabbi Yaakov again asked a very important question on this. He said. If that's the case, is it a boast? So great, so so uh, so do it. <laughs> like like, what are you like? What are you teasing everybody? So do it. We don't, we don't want to deal with this. Do it already. So, so uh, so Rav Yaakov again answered. If Rav Shimon Bar Yochai did do this, if Rav Shimon, the author of the Zohar of the the deepest esoteric uh, book of of Kabbalah, who who wrote the Sefer of Kabbalah based on the Torah. If he would do this with his son and this other huge, tremendous tzaddik, righteous person, he said if he would nullify all the sins, all of good deeds would also be nullified. Because you can't, you in order to do a good deed, a real good deed, you have to have free choice. You have to have the choice to choose to do good or to do otherwise. So if somebody were to really actually nullify a person, the world's, uh, free will to do to do to do to do sins, they would also nullify the, the the real free choice to be able to do good deeds as well. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the world, I'm pretty sure you will see that people have free choice to do good and bad <laughs> till today, and it's proof that it has not been done. All right. And this was one of the things that Rav Yaakov Yagain brought down very very clearly that people need to know and get and, and be aware of. Okay, if sin was nullified, that means your good deeds would be worth very, very, very little bit. And not only that, you probably wouldn't see the effects of it. Not only that, you wouldn't really see sins in the world. You wouldn't really see you wouldn't really see bad deeds in the world because it's already been nullified. That means the will to do bad deeds would be nullified. Also, the will to do, I mean it would be really be worth wouldn't be worth so much. Okay, so you have to understand that. But you see every single thing that a person does. Somebody comes up, says one word, and, and you see in media right now, one person says one word in media and about, about, a, about a president or about, uh, or about this, 
Every the whole world goes goes ape. That that's how you know. That's how you know. Nothing has been nullified. Nothing has been nullified. Everything is still good and evil are still equal. Meaning because it's a like yin and yang, there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance for your good deed to matter. Right now, especially before Mashiach comes, it's very important to recognize that you, every deed, every good thing that we're, especially we're doing on the Amuna, the um, the Amuna, what do you call it, the Amuna group over here, uh, Hashem, and and every good deed that you you do on the other side of the phone is is important, and even though you may we make mistakes, you know, and there and it it might be tremendous, it might 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 really affect us tremendously. Okay, and you, it's important to understand that it does affect us. It's not like we, I, we do bad. There are things that we are doing and, 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 and it doesn't hurt us. No, no, no. It does hurt. But recognize we're asking Hashem to help us do good. We still have, we have tons of free choice right now. We have, we have, we have a choice to choose whatever what we want to do in this life. We're asking Hashem always to help us. Help us choose good. Help us that we should, our, our desire, our inclination to do good should be stronger always to be able to overcome that, that bad inclination. Like Rav Jor has mentioned many times before about Rabbi, Shima, Rabbi Shmuel HaKohen Gadol, that uh, the, the high priest the, uh, who used to go into the Kodesh HaKodoshim, the Holy of Holies, on Yom Kippur, on the holiest day of one of the holiest days of the holiest day of the year, okay, he he said that that God on the highest level, God Himself is praying that His mercy should overcome all the judgments, all of His judgments, all the judgments that stem from God. His mercy should overcome all those judgments. That's what He Himself is praying, and we should pray the same. We should pray all the time that our mercy, that our that the that that the kindness that we have on creation and on ourselves and on our families and everything should always overcome all of the bad, all of the, all of the things, all of the evil schemes that the Yitzhahara, that the evil nation is planning to do. And he's, and he's trying to insinuate within us. He wants to, you know, he tries to get into all the crevices and whatever he can and try to convince us that we're bad. And, you know, look at all the things that you did that you were wrong. Okay, so I made a mistake. So I did whatever I did. That's not who I am, and that's not what I, I don't have to choose that again. And even if I did make a mistake again, I don't have to choose it anymore. And to always clarify that God is with us, to always recognize that God is going to help us, and you're not alone. Thank God we're not God, because if we were God, we would be alone. <laughs> but since we're not God, we are never alone. You have us, and we're, we know, we know. We know for a fact that God is everywhere. All we have to do is reach out, ask Him for help, recognize He's a thank God He's above all humans. Humans can make a mistake in five seconds in a moment. God is never wrong. He can always help us. He's always there waiting to help us. We just have to be willing to put in our effort, whether it's one word, one scream, an hour, ten minutes, five minutes, learning, growing, sharing, whatever the situation is, God is there waiting, watching, always willing to help, always wanting to. And may we want to too. Have a great day. Bye. Great night.